China has built a sun. It will leave the West in the dark. China's bold plan to solve the ultimate energy problem. On July 12, 2025, China's artificial sun device, the experimental advanced superconducting tokamak, East, successfully maintained a high confinement mode plasma operation for 1,066 seconds at a temperature of 100 million degrees Celsius. This duration is more than double the previous world record. While the global scientific community was stunned, unexpected news arrived from across the ocean. The U.S. Department of Energy announced a 12% cut to its fusion research budget for fiscal year 2026, and the European Union also temporarily suspended funding for some fusion experimental projects. This race to the sun which began in the 1950s as an energy technology revolution spearheaded by Western nations, is now seeing them voluntarily slow down? It is worth noting that as early as 1958, Princeton University in the U.S. launched the world's first large-scale tokamak research, and the Soviet Union first publicly disclosed its plasma confinement experimental results in 1968. Yet today, China has not only surpassed them in experimental parameters, but is also far ahead in the engineering process. What kind of strategic rivalry is hidden behind this dramatic reversal? The scientific name for the artificial sun is Magnetic Confinement Nuclear Fusion Device, which essentially mimics the nuclear fusion reaction inside the sun. In the sun's core, about 600 million tons of hydrogen fuse into helium every second, releasing energy that reaches Earth as light and heat. In China's HL3 device, the research team uses a powerful magnetic field to confine plasma in a vacuum chamber, utilizing microwave heating and other technologies to fuse the hydrogen isotopes deuterium and tritium. When these nuclei overcome electrostatic repulsion and are needed, together, a mass deficit occurs, and according to Einstein's mass-energy equivalence formula, dollar equals mc caret 2 dollar, the lost mass instantly converts into energy. The breakthrough of achieving a double 100 million, 100 million degrees Celsius and a confinement time of 100 million seconds level means that Chinese scientists can not only create an extreme environment comparable to the sun's core but have also solved the worldwide problem of plasma device wall interaction through independently developed key components such as superconducting magnets and diverters. This is akin to building a magnetic cage inside a vacuum chamber allowing plasma at 100 million degrees to dance, stably without scorching the device itself. China's artificial sun strategy has long moved beyond mere experimental exploration, establishing a three-stage progression system. Experimental reactor demonstration reactor commercial reactor. In addition to the world record-breaking East device, the China HL3 device in Chengdu has been the first to achieve the mixed plasma operation mode providing crucial data for future steady-state fusion reactor operation. The China Fusion Engineering Test Reactor, KFETR, which broke ground in 2024, is planned for completion by 2035 and will achieve self-sustaining tritium burning, verifying the engineering feasibility of fusion energy. Even more remarkably, China has set a clear goal of building a commercial fusion reactor before 2050, forming a complete fusion industry chain. In contrast, while the U.S. National Ignition Facility, NIF, achieved net energy gain, in 2022, it is a huge distance from continuous operation. The EU's International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER, project is delayed by more than a decade due to technical disagreements and budget overruns. This gap is not only reflected in the timeline but also highlights the executive capability of different research systems in handling major engineering projects. As China accelerates in the artificial sun race, the West is struggling with the dilemma of scientific input versus output. This seemingly pure technological competition is, in fact, interwoven with profound changes in national strategy, industrial layout, and the global energy landscape. Next, let us look beyond the technological breakthroughs to deconstruct the systemic codes and power dynamics behind this energy revolution. I. Western systems suffocate the sun dream, the tug-of-war between money and power. Right after China's East Tokamak announced its 1,066-second record, bad news struck the EU-Leditaire project. 
this international sun, which unites seven parties including the US, China, and Russia, saw its budget balloon from an initial 5 billion euros to 22 billion euros, and its schedule delayed from 2016 to 2027, with rumors of another three-year delay. Even more ironically, the US's Spark project, touted as the commercial fusion pioneer, saw its 2025 funding slashed by 40% because Congress argued that the return cycle is too long, it's better to invest in shale oil. In contrast, China established its three-step fusion reactor strategy in the 1980s and has not changed its direction for 40 years. HL1 was built in 1984, East debuted in 2017, HL3 achieved the double 100 million breakthrough in 2025. Annual R&D investment has grown steadily and has never wavered due to government transitions or the will of capital. Commentary The Fatal Flaw Exposed by the Western scientific research system in the nuclear fusion field stems from the dual constraints of short-sightedness and institutional internal friction. Taking the ITER project as an example, since the agreement was signed in 2006, the 28 EU countries have been embroiled in a continuous tug of war over funding allocation. France, as the host country, constantly demands more R&D leadership while Germany has repeatedly delayed funds citing an overly high proportion of economic contributions. This political maneuvering has directly led to ITER's construction period being extended by nearly a decade and a cost overrun of 20 billion euros. In contrast, China relies on its three steps in 10 years, medium to long-term plan, maintaining strategic resolve in the development of devices like HL2M and EAST. From being a technological learner when it joined the ITER program in 2003 to independently completing the world's first fully superconducting tokamak for steady-state high-confinement operation in 2023, China has consistently followed its predetermined roadmap of basic research, technological verification, and engineering application. This systemic advantage is reflected not only in sustained financial investment but also in establishing a deeply integrated collaborative mechanism of industry academia, research, and application. Universities are responsible for theoretical breakthroughs, research institutes focus on technological challenges, and state-owned enterprises ensure engineering implementation, forming a closed-loop innovation ecosystem. In this race for humanity's energy future, China's decades-long persistence proves that strategic steadfastness is the key to the ultimate energy solution while the West repeatedly changes course amid self-interest disputes. 2. Global cooperation is touted, but the West is building high walls. Immediately after its key technological breakthrough, China's HL3 opened its experimental data to 140 global research institutions and established the world's first IAA Fusion Energy Collaboration Center in Chengdu, hosting experts from 61 countries for joint research. It is important to know that China has been responsible for manufacturing 18 key components for the ITER project, and even the EU admits that. China's components have the highest qualification rate. However, Western actions are full of contradictions. The US introduced new regulations in 2020 for restricting the export of fusion-related superconducting materials to China. The EU talks about win-win cooperation, but excludes China from its domestic. Fusion Demonstration Reactor Plan Even more absurdly, a UK fusion company that wanted to cooperate with China was halted by its government on national security grounds. 3. The Battle for Climate Discourse Who Grabs the Lifeline First? According to the latest International Energy Agency, IA, 2024 annual report, the global energy transition has entered a critical window and the strategic value of nuclear fusion as the ultimate clean energy source is becoming increasingly prominent. The Global Energy Roadmap 2050, released jointly by the UN Environment Program, UNEP, and the International Atomic Energy Agency, IEA, clearly states that to achieve the temperature control goals of the Paris Agreement, fusion energy must shoulder 15% of the world's base energy supply by 2050. This figure is not just a simple energy share indicator but a safety threshold concerning the survival of human civilization. Below this proportion, global carbon reduction efforts face irreversible risks. 
In this race for future energy dominance, China provides a clear answer with its two-phase strategy. The National Magnetic Confinement Fusion Energy Development Special Program plans to build a demonstration reactor with sustained stable operation capability before 2035, realizing the scaled application of controlled nuclear fusion through engineering verification. Subsequently, it aims to achieve commercial-grade fusion reactor grid connection by 2050, establishing a complete fusion energy industry chain. This R&D plus industrial implementation dual-driver model has been validated by groundbreaking achievements such as the East Artificial Sun devices 101 second operation at 120 million degrees Celsius. Even more ironically, the West constantly criticizes developing countries for excessive carbon emissions, yet falters in fusion energy. The EU's fusion R&D budget for 2025 has dropped 30% from 2020. The U.S. is investing more money in short-term profitable solar PV power, turning a blind eye to nuclear fusion as the ultimate solution. China, however, proves with concrete action that true climate responsibility is not about pressure from rhetoric but about providing a solution through technological breakthroughs. Commentary. Climate change is fundamentally an energy revolution. Whoever masters fusion energy first will control the climate governance discourse. The West, while pointing fingers at COP conferences, cuts fusion investment, exposing the hypocrisy of wanting others to reduce emissions while being unwilling to sacrifice their own short-term interests. China's breakthrough is not just a technological victory, it provides a pragmatic option for global climate negotiations. Instead of arguing over who should cut emissions, let's join forces to build the Artificial Sunday.